I am Dr. Aravi. I am the head of the department of uh, infectious disease at Government Medical College, Tiruvanthapuram, Kerala. I am also the technical lead for Kerala State One Health Committee. One Health as a concept, we all know that the health of the humans is intrinsically linked to the health of animals, the plants, fish, the environment as such. So it's basically a collaborative effort, a multi-sectoral, interdisciplinary approach which has to be carried out locally nationally as well as globally. Coming to the impact of a gut microbiome and uh, uh, this thing, One Health approach, we need to understand one thing. So One Health as such in the state as well as nationally, the focus is on the prevention and diagnosis and treatment of zoonotic infections as well as the second component is very important, that is antimicrobial resistance, which we all know is a silent pandemic. So when we are talking about the gut microbiome, uh, the one simple example is the WHO tricycle project. Tricycle project means that they are tracking the, the resistance elements, so the genetic determinants of resistance in one particular organism, that is the Escherichia coli, is E. coli, in poultry, in uh, humans, as well as in environment. So why this is being done is that we know that you know, around 70% of antibiotics are being used in animal husbandry, for example, in poultry industry. And you know the the poultry is fed with antibiotics. You know the microbiome in the poultry gut will change, and then along with the the excreta of this uh, the poultry, you can have this antimicrobial resistant organisms, resistant genes as well as you know antibiotic residues. So this will go into the environment. So if the biosecurity practices in say farms etc are not appropriate, this antibiotic resistant genes the residues as well as organism might find its way into our food chain and we may consume it directly or indirectly. So means that even without taking antibiotics, antimicrobial resistant organism residues and genes might get into our gut and can alter our gut microbiome as well. So this is basically a vicious cycle. So this is one aspect of the impact of gut microbiome on one health. On the other side of it, we know that this science is you know, rapidly advancing as far as the study of the gut microbiome is uh, concerned uh, we, and uh, the alterations in the gut microbiome which is referred to as the dysbiosis has been implicated in the genesis of many chronic diseases like say diabetes, hypertension, obesity, inflammatory conditions uh, and then Alzheimer's disease, neurodegenerative conditions etc. And also it plays a very important role in the development of antimicrobial resistance. So gut microbiome is very important. And recently we had a, a study which was done in uh, end-stage renal disease patients who are on dialysis. So uh, the study included around say 225 patients who had this end-stage renal disease on dialysis. And they studied the gut microbiome. This from the stool samples of those patients and the control group never had any disease. They found that you know the expression of certain genes which lead to the production of uremic toxin were higher in patients with end-stage renal disease and it was due to the excess presence of two bacteria that is you know fusobacterium nucleatum and ergatella species an interesting aspect is that when the feces of these patients with ESRD was in inoculated into mice in the healthy mice they also developed symptoms of you know end-stage renal disease they ha also had this uremia sort of thing so this actually uh, points towards the future of uh, you know the study on the gut microbiome and its uh, role in the genesis of many infections as well as inflammatory conditions. And the second part of this study was that they identified a probiotic that is Bifidobacterium animalis and when this probiotic was actually fed to these mice, the symptoms did improve. It's an evolving science with a lot of promise. Regarding the challenges and opportunities with regard to the One Health, so one thing we need to understand is that when you are looking at the drivers of antimicrobial resistance or for that matter zoonotic disease, there are a lot of drivers you know, just like climate change, you know, so that you now to have a, uh, you know, a really meaningful approach to One Health, we need to have all the stakeholders on board. Like it's not the human side alone. We know that for zoonotic infection surveillance, around 60% of zoonotic in, uh, emerging infections are from animals. So in order to bring down the burden of infections in uh, humans, we need to have the animal husbandry uh, department, the fisheries department, everyone need to work together. So that is actually one of the biggest challenges. For example, uh, when the De Delhi declaration was passed in 2017 with regard to antimicrobial resistance, it was uh, you know, jointly signed by 11 ministries. So 11 ministers coming together to enact a, uh, for a program etc. 
for uh, you know have a concerted action becomes you know uh, really difficult in the future so that is going to be the biggest challenge of one health and also the movement of this uh, resistant genes and uh, the clinically important genes between the animals the plants environment humans to quantify it and to come out with a meaningful outcome out of it you need, uh, require very much resources and it's a very cost in uh, incentive <coughs> uh, uh, too much of cost is also involved to do this short gen uh, metagenomics etc so these are going to be the the challenges of one health actions taken by uh, kerala with regard to the problems to be address under one health umbrella in 2018 kerala government uh, passed this you know the carsa that is kerala anti microbial resistant strategic action plan which was actually devised by the departments of animal husbandry agriculture dairy fisheries aquaculture along with the the human side so truly a one health document and then 2021 the kerala state launched this one health program uh, in the uh, in the phase one of one health program was launched in the pamba basin districts here the focus is on the zoonotic infection surveillance and control and antimicrobial resistance and last year itself the the third program under the one health umbrella was launched that is to have a center of excellence for research in a microbiome there also we are having nodal officers from the human side from the plant side the animal side the environment side etc so the, these are the initiatives taken by the government of kerala to address the issues of zoonotic infections as well as amr under the one health umbrella it's a very very challenging task but we are actually having a very structured and tired approach to tackling this issue